Hello, okay, so today I'm going to talk about this quite large landscape painting I did, which I decided to crop to a square, um, but I did actually paint it originally as in a more of a landscape format, but I'll talk a bit about why I decided to crop it at the end. So the inspiration for this painting came from a visit to the Highlands in Scotland, and I had um, a whole load of photographs. Um, and I was looking at all the different types of terrain and the many different colours and shapes that it was forming um, in the foreground and the mountains in the back. Now I didn't base this on any one particular view but I was just taking ideas from this into my painting. I'm going to get straight into the painting and I'm going to quickly talk first about the tools I had. So I had some big brushes because this is going to be a big painting and I had Aquapasto medium which I'll mix in towards the end. And then I just had a silicone um, tool here and also a squidgy. Uh, there's a knife there as well. So when working big, you do need big brushes and you also need um, large areas to be able to mix your colours. So I use a bowl. Um, I do also have a big plate, um, but a tiny little palette wouldn't really work very well for this. Okay, so the colours I used, I'll start from the top. I've got yellow okra, I've got burnt sienna, I've got cobalt blue, I've got cerulean blue, and I had a lemon yellow, and I did add a Windsor violet towards the end. Okay, so I'm gonna wet the whole page because I'm gonna do a bit of wet and wet work to start with. Um, and I'm getting really clean um, water on my large brush, and I'm just covering the paper. And it, it's not soaking, it's just well covered. Now I've really sped this up, but there's no rush. You can just take your time and enjoy it a bit. Um, and now I'm getting the yellow okra and I'm just putting um, some of this at the top and some of this at the bottom. Um, I'm thinking about the colours that I want to use and some of the colours I saw in my photographs but like I said I'm not following a particular photo and I'm wanting to have quite neutral colours so there I'm mixing the, the um, cobalt blue with the yellow okra and I'm making a nice grey with that but because it's got the yellow ochre in, it, it goes well with the yellow ochre that's all, already down. Um, and that is why working with a really um, limited colour palette works well, because you know that the colours are going to be um, harmonious together. Um, you're making all your colours from this sort of limited colour palette. Now I haven't stretched my paper, so it won't stay completely flat. And I will talk a bit about how I deal with that um, as we go on. I got my knife there and I just put some marks in that will form some of the mountains in the background. So something I really liked about these views was the green and I'm, I'm just adding some lemon yellow there to make this really quite bright green. Um, that's going on top of white so that's, that colour is going to be quite um, pure and bright. Um, and I'm not thinking too much about where I put it down, I just know that there were these interesting sort of shapes of green and and then sort of browner colours as well. So I'm just laying those down in the centre. So I've obviously left this area of white in the middle um, and I think that was because it was these, it was the area in the middle of the photos that interested me with the colours. Um, I didn't plan this painting absolutely, I was working quite instinctively. I don't always leave an area of white in the middle. But that is how I did this painting and I think there I was just showing how I made my neutral. So I made my neutral with the cobalt blue and the burnt sienna. And um, you can make quite a sort of grey colour with those two. Um, and I decided that I did want to try and get some neutrals down at this point. So I made up a grey and I, I put that um, quite centrally in the painting. And I did the same at the top, I laid down some of this grey colour um, which is going to form part of the mountains. And then here I get my knife and I'm just drawing in some uh, mountain shapes in the background. Okay so I'm just going to continue to build my layers and my colours up in this way. Um, and I will put the music up for a bit but you'll also see me hold the edge of the paper um, and that is just so that I can paint without the wrinkles of the painting getting getting in the way and that is how I sort of deal with this um, paper when it's not stretched and as I said I've got the photos and the landscape in my mind but I'm just 
trying to convey an idea of these different shapes and different colours without following one particular view. Um, but I'll just put the music up um, for a bit and then I'll jump in again um, soon. Okay, so quite often when I'm doing landscape paintings like this, I've got my lighter layers down and at a certain point I decide it's really time to go in with a darker layer. Um, and what I've done here is I've mixed some Aquapasto medium in with this blue colour. Again, this blue colour is made from the cobalt blue and the burnt sienna. So it all works harmoniously with the other colours. Um, and the thing that's nice when you add the Aquapasto is that you can actually use the squidgy and sort of pull the paint across and I've just found this to be a really nice thing to do in these landscape paintings and it's also kind of fun it's not something that you'd normally associate with watercolour paints and um, squidgies but I've really enjoyed doing this so you could give it a go yourself if you want to or just use your big brush so where I left that area of white in the middle and I've put the blue on top, um, it's making that colour quite nice and bright and quite a nice contrast to the blue below which is over the more neutral colour so when I do these kind of landscapes I do often try to keep white areas because you always need to keep in mind with watercolour that you can't put light colours over dark so it's always handy to leave a bit of white paper it just gives you a bit of leeway when it comes to um, you know having a bit of light in your paintings really and not getting them too dark or too muddy okay this area towards the bottom of the paper is quite wet so I'm not going to do any more work on that I'm going to let it dry um, and then I'm going to do some work to the top because the top bit is um, a bit drier and I think at this point a little splodge of paint landed on my on my work um, and things like that do happen and you kind of something like that happens and you sort of panic a bit but actually in the end these kinds of mistakes with watercolor can be the thing that sort of you know adds something to your painting so whenever something like that happens I always try not to panic and I just work with it and actually in this case I was quite happy with how these mountains turned out as a result of that accident so um, you know it's always good to to just go with what happens and to not be too um, worried or precious it's hard sometimes um, but I think you need to kind of try and relax a little bit okay so I'm adding in more layers and I'm just going to put the music up for a bit and then I'll jump in again So like I said I didn't flatten my paper so you do get these creases and I often pick up the paper like this and I help the paint move around. I'm trying to get a sort of um, you know left to right right to left um, feel of this painting so I am trying to keep these horizontal lines going. Um, now I haven't stretched my paper but you can stretch your paper. I just don't, I often don't because I like to work quite spontaneously and I, I don't mind to sort of move the paper around like this, but I'm, I'm not saying this is the best way. And you can always experiment with doing both. Okay, so I wanted to wait for these layers to dry. So I took the camera off the stand and I'm just showing my setup. So 
I've actually got everything to the left. I'd normally have it on the right, but because of the camera stand, I had to put it on my left. But as you can see, I've got these big um, and palettes and big bowls for mixing the paint. I've got my big brushes and I've got my clean water. I've also got a reference painting at the top, which is one I did that's quite similar to this one. Um, and that is my setup, but let's carry on. This is all dry now and the layers have dried a bit lighter as they always do with watercolour. So I'm going in with my final layers and these layers I have for the most part got quite a lot of aquapasto in them and I'm going to be moving them around with my squidgy and making marks in them. Um, for the layers at the bottom and top I didn't use quite so much aquapasto, I was still trying to keep that quite light wash look. But I'll put the music up and then I'll jump in again at the end. Okay, so I have speeded this part of the painting up quite a lot, this end bit, because I did add quite a lot of layers and quite a lot of detail with these thicker layers of, with the aquapasto. And I don't always do that, but I did um, for this painting and I was actually really happy with how this painting turned out. Um, and we are getting towards the end. Um, I stood back from it at this point and I decided to add this uh, highlight here. Um, but once that was done, I really felt like the painting was finished. Okay, so I've got the finished painting here and I did actually stretch it. And for that I used tape and there's a link in the description as to how you can do that. That uses a tape method instead of books and that's really useful for such a big painting. It's not completely flat so I might have to do the process again but that's quite usual for such a big painting. Um, so once I had finished, I actually decided that what I would do is I would mount this painting onto a square panel and um, I've just got a cut out here which is roughly the size of it. I just thought that the composition looked better as a square. Um, but anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and that it's been useful and if you did hit like and if you want to see similar videos in the future then please subscribe to my channel. Okay, thank you, bye.